Hi, welcome, welcome to the Break It Down podcast You're with Joel and Andy from Codebreak today. And today we're going to be talking about big data and how that can influence your marketing. Hi, Andy, how are you doing? Hey, Joel, are you okay? Yeah, all right, yeah. It's definitely fed up a lockdown now, but it is what it is. So, I know my, my children, they're, they're, well, school starts again tomorrow virtually. But, you know, it's, it's really weird looking at the positive side of things. I, I mean, I can't, I can't wait to, to see, see all, all you guys again. Mm, I've always yeah. really enjoyed spending time, more time with the children, playing board games, watching TV. You leave me very strange. But anyway, anyway, anyway I, we can we can we can talk about that. What, what are we talking about today? What, what's the what's 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 the today's podcast about? About Loads. an it's, AI, I believe. Yeah, big data and AI. So kind of um, for the layman, someone who doesn't know what we're talking about, it's about how your devices, everything you do, is collected as data and. For a small business, that's a great opportunity because if you find the right advertising platform, you can show people adverts that they actually want to see, you know they'll be interested in. Targeted advertising, love it, love it. Excellent, so that's what we're gonna get into today. Brilliant, but, uh, but everything okay? Are you, I, I hear you're, 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 a bit, you're a bit sad. You didn't get the delivery you wanted today. Well, yeah, I'm awaiting a delivery of my mountain bike and um, got the dispatch notice and the doorbell went, answered the door, and it was just the trousers. So, and what are mountain bike trousers then? Well, they're just—they're not—they don't dig into you when you're wearing them. So, there's there's no kind of like buckle or anything. It's all elastic. So, are they leggings, John? No, no, no. They're they're um, very much not leggings. Okay. Are they as cool as my new bandana? Yeah. Well, I mean. I know you're six years late to the buff game, but um, I'm wearing it now. You know, are you? You're just going to wear it all the time. I'm wearing nothing else. I'm just wearing my buff bandana. That's absolutely disturbing. But I, I use my buff as my mask when I have to go to the shops. No, it's really hot. No, but um, it's it's a good way of embarrassing the kids. I've done a lot about uh, a lot of that during lockdown. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, as you know, I haven't got many friends generally, because um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm so antisocial. No, most of my friends are obviously uh, down in London. We left, left London to set up business up here. You know, didn't have time for friends, to be honest. Um, mm. So, you know, the friends I've got, the work guys, you guys, you know, really missing you guys. Can't wait to get back in the office. Um, but generally speaking, it's been, it's, it's been okay. I mean, yeah, it's been a, a, a bloody challenge. And let, let's, let's face it, that, that initial, what would you say, the first, first fortnight like the oh shit fortnight when what's going on but i think quite a few people seem to have got into a bit of rhythm now and right okay we've got to, we've got to do something we've got to have yeah it. we've got to have a business to come back to what's the plan yeah definitely i've seen a, a big resurgence of businesses just interacting with us and, and asking questions and and just not willing to accept the pause they, they want to crack on and i think that's a healthy attitude Absolutely. I mean, let's let's make no bones about it. I mean, this this is a shit time. It has affected everyone. Although obviously, it has affected some people more than others. I mean, touch wood. You know, my my sort of my my I suppose social network with my my friends and family and their their health. Again, touch wood is okay. My mum's in in a high risk category. My mother in law's in a high risk category, but they're self-isolated and they're okay. So there are people out there that are obviously feeling more pain than others. Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, uh, there, there's always shit that's going to affect people and businesses. And this is an awful time, but bloody hell, we, we've got to be positive. And oh, I'm so glad of the businesses that are being positive. Just put in, you know, because you can't turn the news on at the moment without bad news. You can't read a newspaper without bad news. You can't go on your phone without bad news. So for those little glimpses of light it's so nice to see even businesses we've had never had involvement with just doing well the ones that are doing well good news doesn't sell newspapers it it, it never has like emma emma said to me yesterday she had to do um let's say her mum self isolate so emma had to do a, a shopping run for her and she said to me do you want to get do you want me to get you the paper and i said no because i don't want to sit there half a day just reading depressing shit. Depressing shit's going on. I'm, I'm not blinkering myself to that. But yeah. I've got I've got staff to look after. I've got a business to look after. I've got children to look after. I need to crack on and do stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as as you know, our audience doesn't know, but we've obviously suffered a loss during all this crap. And 
as incredibly sad as that is, I'm so glad of some positivity around me. You know, our, our team are very good. They're really good at keeping everybody's spirits high. Some of our clients have proven to be really good. Some of the charitable work they're doing, some of the things they're doing for themselves, amazing. And just to see how people in the community are doing stuff as well, I think just it's inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, there is a massive difference between being optimistic and, and being blinkered, you know. So we're not talking that. We're not talking, you know, we haven't popped the rose-tinted glasses on and everything's okay and everything's going to be wonderful. Remember the blitz. You know, it's we're not talking about that, but we're talking about addressing a challenge because, you know, the old, the old saying, control the controllables. Yeah. There is nothing I can do apart from, obviously, you know, you using the government guidelines about social distancing. You know, when I see those idiots all bloody bike riding 20 strong or, or sunbathing in the park, I mean, that's that's bloody awful. So so we will do what we can, but there's the rest of it's out of our control. Hmm. So I can either stew and moan about that, or I can think, right, okay, Joel, what do we do? need to do about our business to look after our clients and look after our staff? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean... I, speaking for ourselves, we're obviously doing some charitable stuff behind the scenes at the moment that we'll be able to talk about later on this month. And we're also doing everything we can to obviously keep the business going in the right direction. That's that's our duty to our staff and to our clients. Absolutely. And, and then on top of that, you know, we've got we've got our own stuff to deal with away from work that everybody has to deal with at the moment. And it just Indeed. I've really enjoyed the podcasts I've listened to, the vlogs I've watched of businesses who aren't just willing to sit still at the moment. That obviously we've almost all been told to pause to an extent, and some businesses are zero income. But that doesn't mean you have to stay still. You can use this time effectively. Yeah, I've I've got a I've got a Zoom call after after recording this podcast. I've got a Zoom call with a big client of ours who who have gone from earning a lot of money to, to becoming a zero income business and this meeting is talking about their, their reopening plan. It's like if this has got to happen we, we, we've got to meet this challenge and do something about it and, yeah. and hats off to them you know it's, it's, it's amazing and it's just a personal choice of mine and, and yours that we just can't allow the, the, the moaners and the complainers and the ones who are almost resentful that there are some businesses who are doing okay at the moment I've got no time for that. I can't. I can't let oh, it my mindset. Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm notorious in our office, probably with half of our clients and with my friends for being a dry, sarcastic idiot at times. And I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, it's I'm finding it almost amusing, but somewhat sad that actually, when the shit hits the fan. I'm, I'm not. I'm not as negative as people make out. You know, there's there's certain businesses we're seeing. It's like, come on, guys, you can do this. And and that, and then there's other businesses we're seeing that really are doing everything they can. Yeah, a- absolutely. And and if if you know the guys listen to this, if your business is is up the creek at the moment, it's really difficult. Naturally, I'm really sorry, but you know, we have faced these challenges as well. We've got clients that, again, have gone from earning money to being a zero income business. And I'm sure the people listening, if you are up the creek, you're not out there just not being resentful of, like I mentioned, other people's success. You've got to support, you know, we all talk about the, the hashtag support local, you know, the independent business out there that need, that need our help. Yeah. There are some people out there that seem to have quickly forgotten it, just like, you know, the, the awful you know, you know, I had a bit of a Caroline Flack obsession and that the awful thing that happened to her and, and and the only sort of, the only glimmer of positivity that came out of that awful story was the hashtag be kind. And then COVID-19 happens and suddenly people are like looting supermarkets. Like, well, that lasted long then, didn't it? People have forgotten. Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah, that's such a good point, you know. But then I guess on the other side of that, I've seen small communities coming up with pay it forward schemes where their local Facebook groups, you can buy vouchers for individual businesses so that when they reopen, you've already bought your slot or your meal or your haircut or whatever it might be. Yeah, and you could do that. Um, Instagram and launch it as well, haven't they? Yeah, and I think that's such a, a lovely thing. And you can't you can't underestimate how putting that little bit of cash into a business that's currently zero income will help them so much. I've got to think that we will, and a lot of businesses will come out of this 
at some point in a better place um, and probably in, in a better base a place personally as well like appreciating like I was just reading um, one of our clients who posted earlier saying about just just sitting in a restaurant and and when you know when was the last time you were in a restaurant and you looked around and just and just appreciated seeing people laugh and smile families eating together couples maybe going on their first date and things like that to so taking note of, of how lucky you are just just the day-to-day -day stuff that obviously you take for granted and I can't I oh, can't wait for that that day to come again and I'm sure that day will come again yeah absolutely it's I think I mean for people who've struggled with negativity or depression or anxiety before I think finding the positives in life is is a really important skill anyway and now I think the masses are gonna have to do that that people who have perhaps never had to go through a, a serious lull are, are not going to take those nice things for granted anymore? No, no I, I, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, let's say that there's business owners out there who are, well, all business owners are, are struggling, um, but there are some who are addressing that challenge and, and others who are, you know, in, in terms of their marketing, they, they are, you know, some of them are cutting their marketing, some are expanding their marketing. But most of the guys we're talking to, whether they're clients or not, they're people who are taking advantage of the free consultations we're offering. Mm. They want to know, right, what, what are the cost effective things I can do? There are things that you can do that is that are free. So, for example, I think I did a video or was one of our, my emails recently about making sure your Google My Business listing is up to date to keep Google happy. Because, again, Google doesn't respect COVID-19 and you don't want your website search engine rankings to, to struggle. Yeah. So things you can do, and there are cost-effective advertising things out there that people do at the moment. And there are some business owners who want to take advantage of that and make sure they can keep their name out there. Because again, they, they don't want they don't want things to be as bad as they can be when the country gets back on its feet. They they want to prepare, and and I think that that's individuals, that's that's businesses whether it's mindset or what i don't know but it's it's finding those people who are like right when when you ask the question are you planning on having a business to come back to there's like yep absolutely i don't know what way shape or form but i'm planning on having a business to come back to so i need to do something about it now and there are people out there like that as well and i think sometimes in all the doom and gloom you you can forget that because to come back to the original point that kind of news doesn't sell newspapers no, absolutely. And I think people forget, or the, the press certainly manipulates people to think that business is bad, that, that, that sticking it to the man is a good thing. And actually, sometimes there's businesses out there that do an awful lot of good. And we're lucky to associate with quite a few businesses that not just do their day to day business. That's not how their business works. Their businesses have strong morals and strong values. And actually, they're an integral part of the community, and, and what they deliver provides jobs for the community. It provides respite for the community. It provides charity for the community. And when you take that away, that's a big gap. I mean, who, who you know, the last recession, you know, the, the impending economic troubles. Who who pulls a country out of recession? It's it's the small businesses, the small business owners, the entrepreneurs. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, even when you talk about like you know a school a school could be entrepreneurial you know we've got an education client and their design and technology department have been busy uh, designing and making face masks and donating them to the to the local nhs yeah. trust very fantastic stuff yeah it's, it's incredible what some business i mean I've, I've seen a 3d printer business recently who's just gone crazy on face masks and then another business that we know of who He's normally a furniture maker, but his hobby is 3D printing, and he's been—he created his own clip for people so their ears don't get sore when wearing face masks. Yes. And you just think, wow, well, these people don't have to do that, but that's—that's that's what they're about, and that's why their businesses are successful as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, well, so I mean, big data. Is this uh, where does this play a part? I mean, I suppose we we we, we touched upon cost-effective advertising. Yeah, enough, we do love advertising if it's done well and accountable and tested and measured. We're always big about testing and measuring. Uh, and there are traditional advertising platforms that can work for people. But I think at the moment, pretty much every business owner's attention has turned maybe exclusively, this be that strong, exclusively to online, to social media advertising.
Hi, Joel and Andy here. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We're loving sharing our marketing tips with you. If you'd like to kickstart your marketing, why not jump on a discovery call? Simply visit codebreak.co.uk and apply there. Hopefully speak to you soon. Take care. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, obviously, social media advertising has proven to be so cost-effective that it's incredibly popular, but also the targeting and the range of people that you can get to is so much more accurate than say print media for example yeah absolutely it's, it's that that like, holy grail of both both volume and targeting because you know i suppose traditionally it's been one or the other so i always use the analogy when i was at itv we sold on volume when i then moved to pearl and dean cinema advertising we sold on targeting fewer yeah. people went to the cinema but they were more niche audiences, depending on what films were showing. Yeah, absolutely. Which is a, a very good early example of that kind of targeted advertising. Much like if you advertise in a horse and hound magazine, you're going to be shown to a different audience than if you advertise in the Beano. Oh, the Beano. I used to get that, you know, as a kid. Did you? Who was your favourite character? Nine P, it was. Who was your favourite character? Oh, I, uh, oh I, my favourite... Um, story or strip in the Beano was always the Bass Street Kid. But okay. if you ask me to name my favourite Bass Street Kid, oh, I can't think off the top of my head. Who was the really ugly one? Was it Plug? Mm, I, I really Yeah, the big, the big sticky out ears. I, I only know Nasha and Dennis. <laughs> oh, not the Bass Street Kids? So, so, I, the Beano was still around when I was a kid, but I was a desperate Dan man. So. Oh, Dandy? Yeah. Was, was it Cow Pies or something? Yeah, exactly that, yeah. Who was another Dan? Was that Beryl the Peril? Was that Dan? Yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, Beryl, okay. Right, we're going off track again. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We are sort of talking about advertising, but yeah. Yeah, so the reason this has come up was I was having a chat with some friends who essentially, some in a positive way and some in a negative way, are convinced that their phone and their home devices are listening to them and can read their minds. Oh, was that my mum? <laughs> And so I, I wrote them an explanation, when I, and it's the best way I've ever got it across. And I thought, well, I'll read that to you, and it, I think it'll make for a good podcast. So I said, I said, well, they can sort of read your mind, but no, they're not listening to you. And they said, well, how? Explain, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, okay, so do you know what same thought syndrome is? And they said, no. And I said, well, that's the phenomenon where two friends who have spent a lot of time together, so maybe they've been in the car together all day, start singing the same song at exactly the same time. And I think everybody's got an example of that in their lives where you've thought the same thing or said the same thing or started singing a song at the same time as the person you're with that day. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, the reason that happens is supposedly because you've been exposed to the same stimuli all day leading up to that moment. And so I said, with your phone or your device, it's seen it's seen your searches that day, it's seen the apps you've opened, it's seen any purchases you might have made, maybe you've used Apple Pay. It knows where you've been and therefore probably what you've seen. And so it can serve you content based on all of that, which is probably similar to what you're thinking about. I mean, do they believe you? Well, they've got no choice. <laughs> so re remember what happened, was it, was it last year when there, there was a big spell where people were obsessed with their was it their tellies listening to them? Was it a Samsung? Yeah, the Samsungs were listening, weren't they? And it was for customer feedback reasons or something. Because uh, um, obviously, you know, I can't say her name because she's right over there in the corner. So we just call her Ding Dong. But you know, the smart speaker that's always listening? Yeah, yeah, the Amazon one, yeah. Yep, yep. And it's like, it is, it is a little bit scary. And, you know, pe people, especially I suppose, well, we've got friends who are consumers rather than business owners and, and they will uh, moan or be interested in data capture, how various advertising platforms capture data. But when we talk to business owners, which we do most of the time, they look at it like, obviously from the other angle, that this is a good thing. And as long as yeah. as long as long people are aware, I suppose, of what data they give away, or got to be, to be honest, the biggest one for me is people have to be aware that when it comes to a, a an advertising platform yeah. or an online platform that is used for fun, whatever it is, if it's free of charge, they are going to want something for that free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So yeah. when everyone downloads that that app that make, turns you into an old person for free, it's not. It's taking your data. Absolutely. But from a business owner point of view, as long as people you know are happy to tell Facebook where they went to school, 
or you know tell Facebook that they've got children or they like playing tennis, whatever it might be. From a business owner point of view, it's a great thing. It's a great way of, of ensuring you don't get much wastage in your hard-earned advertising money. The money you're spending is hitting the people most likely to buy off you. Yeah, it's it's a double win. The people, the people get served the stuff that they're probably looking for, and the business only serves their product to people who probably want it. It's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, I, want, I wonder if, um, uh, so, I mean, Emma was talking about this, about um, Emma's grandparents, when they got really old, used to live with them, so, you know, m- many years ago. Mm-hmm. And and her, her granddad was, so I suppose old school, whatever the, the phrase is, he wouldn't watch ITV. That was just not done. It was BBC or nothing. Yeah. So he'd pay your life street and, and he wouldn't watch ITV, you know, and adverts, it was all down market, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I wonder now, I wonder how many people would be prepared, for example, to pay Facebook a certain amount of money every month to not have ads. Because to me, you know, I suppose, yep, my first job was at ITV. And it's like, it's a free channel. It's free media that I'm consuming. And the price I have to pay is being served adverts. Yeah. I can't see why they would moan about that. I, I either pay the BBC a license fee and watch BBC, or <clears throat> watch ITV and be happy to be served adverts. And they could be adverts, obviously now, that could might have absolutely no relevance to you or your needs or interests. But if it's done correctly on social media, the ads you're served are going to have a much higher yeah. chance of being of relevance to you. It will change with TV soon, though. We, you know, we've been in a couple of meetings about Sky AdSense and Sky Ad. Oh Smart. yes, yes, yes. They're going to start to serve adverts relevant to the person watching the Sky Box. That's pretty. Mm, pretty yes, smart we've got a couple of exciting things lined up on that front, haven't we? So. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, How the world's changing, Joel. I I prefer it. I I think people need to. You know, if you're willing to give that data away, which by not either not reading terms and conditions properly or reading them properly and being okay with it, then you have to accept that, like you say, there's a price to pay for using these things. But I would much prefer a situation where I'm being served stuff that's relevant to me than the old school situation of, like you say, watching ITV or Carlton as it was back in the day around here and just being served adverts for stuff I'll never ever use yeah absolutely it's like um what's uh, what's a what's a good example I know loyalty cards everyone's got a loyalty card even a local coffee shop you know buy five coffees get six free but that tends to be a, like a piece of paper there's no tracking really going on but loyalty cards like I suppose Nectar card that's a big one isn't it Sainsbury's that is a free card that will obviously the more you shop the more points you get that can be redeemed for purchases but that will be tracking you it is, again, there's no such thing as a free lunch. This is what they get out of it. But accordingly, when you get served adverts or maybe vouchers in the post from Sainsbury's, they should be vouchers for products that you bought. Yeah, exactly that. And so it's, it's clever marketing. It, absolutely, it's there is a, a level of intrusion there, but it's intrusion that you've, chose, you've chosen to have and therefore you get a better shopping experience. You get vouchers for things that you might buy. Uh, it's, 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 I mean, obviously there are, you know, I'll still have friends, but, you know, they know what I do for a living and, and they'll say to me, oh, look, bloody ads on Facebook, I'll keep seeing an ad for this, it's not relevant to me. It's like, that's not Facebook's fault. It's the business, whichever agency they've employed or if they're doing it themselves, yeah. they've got their targeting wrong, not Facebook's fault. Absolutely. You know? And, you know, I think well, my, one friend has only kept gets, seen these underwear ads, these women's underwear ads, and it's like, well, okay, well, you've probably been visiting some dodgy websites. No, well, you've been searching for, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's amazing, because, I mean, you know, we do social media training, and we'll ask a few, I suppose, what we call fundamental questions. And it always, I, it's always good to, because re- it reminds me that you've got really experienced, seasoned business owners out there who are amazing what they do, when it comes to marketing, especially social media marketing, they don't know what perhaps lots of other people, especially younger people, know. Like one of the questions might be, you know, do you know who owns Instagram? And so many business owners don't know that Instagram is owned by Facebook. Um, so many don't know about things like retargeting, where you can literally follow people around the internet. And it's some of these basics are just 
the building blocks of, of running a cost-effective online advertising campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I don't think people ever have ever quite grasped retargeting. I, mean, I think, you know, you know in, in five years time, it will be a common thing, but that whole idea of a pair of trainers following you around the internet, it, it, people think it's witchcraft. And actually it's one of the simplest forms of advertising going now. I mean, would you say, I, I reckon about 50% of the business owners we speak to, when we use that trainer's analogy, they're like, oh, that that's what it is. And they, they just, you know, it's not criticism, they just simply weren't aware of it. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's almost like they, th they think the computer or the phone can read their mind, which is where I come back to what I was talking about, that I actually no, your behaviours have led you to that point. And, and the fact is most, I mean, depending on a business's price point, you know, if you're selling widgets for like 50p or whatever, and you can't find them cheaper anywhere else on the internet, people will probably make that uh, decision to purchase there and then. But for many businesses, people won't buy the first time they're served an ad. Yeah. So you want to follow them around a bit, you know, in a nice way. Obviously, you don't want to stalk them and just serve it like 50 times a day. But, you know, if you've got to effectively touch people like eight times, it seems to be popular before they make a decision to purchase. When they've seen that pair of trainers, if you can have that specific pair of trainers, not the general range, not the general brand, but that specific pair of trainers, follow them around on various websites, various social media, in a nice way. It could be like time number five or six. They're like, God, those trainers are blimey. I, right, I need to get this sorted. Where's, where's my credit card? Yeah, absolutely. And you can be smart about it too, because we, we serve retargeting adverts for clients, but you wouldn't retarget someone that's only spent two seconds or five seconds on that page. You'd only retarget someone who's engaged with that page. So they've clearly scrolled or they've expanded an image or they've added to basket. You do, you've got to be smart about it. You don't just blanketly retarget people for spending less than five seconds on your website. I mean, yeah, that could work really well. I know it's something we've been um, trialing for quite a few months now, but we've got a few clients that where we're running a, a, a basically a, a video advertising campaign with like five different videos, but you don't get served the second video unless you've watched a certain amount of the first video. Yeah. And it's the same thing. If people watch two seconds of a video and switch off, they're not interested. They watch at least 20 seconds. Great. Okay. They're interested enough. For us to let's serve them video number two and see yeah. how much they watch of it. Now let's serve them video number three, and then you hit them with a sell on video number five. Yeah, and you think about that in terms of a funnel. Maybe you've got a thousand people at video one, but by the time you get out to video five, you're probably down to twenty. And of that twenty, maybe maybe ten percent will purchase. And and you can really start to look at the maths of what you're doing and how much you need to spend to make people do what you need them to do for your business. I mean, it's so interesting. I mean, you know my hatred of numbers, basically, because I'm not very good at them. But it's just fascinating to look at some of the fundamental numbers. That, the fact that, you know, we've got a sales funnel running where we know that people make that decision to get in touch. On I think it's like day 63 or something. So you've got like a 90-day funnel. But it's day 63. That's, that's, that's when people have either basically left or got in touch. And it's knowing numbers like that allows you to plan your budgets. Um, and even even like when we have discovery calls with clients to ask them, you know, do you know what the lifetime value of a customer is? And, and a lot of business owners don't. You need to know that number so you can talk about budget. Yeah, hugely. So from our perspective, we know how much it costs to get somebody into our funnel. We know roughly how many people in that funnel book a discovery call. We know roughly how many discovery calls we converse. And so by the time we've converted someone, we know what they've cost to become a client. Mm -hmm. It's hugely powerful data for us. Well, I think is it big data. You've got, you know, I know I've had to make myself get more comfortable with the numbers. There can still, and I think we, we talked about this recently again, we talked about paralysis by analysis. We do know some business owners who spend way too long surrounded by spreadsheets. Mm. There are, I mean, basic always makes it sound wrong and just too simple, but there are some good basic numbers you need to know in your marketing, because that's one thing that so many business owners, you know, are skeptical about when it comes to marketing. 
they just no. think it's all fluffy. There's no numbers or science behind it. When you know, if you're brand awareness, of course, you know, you you need to trust your gut instinct as an entrepreneur to a certain extent to know that right. Well, listen, I'm comfortable with spending X amount to keep my name out there. I know that you know. Coca-Cola I always see around, Ikea I always see around, and at some point people will buy some Coca-Cola or they'll buy something from Ikea. So brand awareness, yeah, you can't put a, a specific number on, but when it comes to generating inquiries, a lot of sales, generating inquiries, then you, you do need to have a budget in mind. And, and I think, George, was it George or you wrote a blog about, about size matters, about the, your marketing budget, you need to know what that number is. Yeah, I think I recorded a video, and then and then Georgia called called the the accompanying blog size matters. Yeah, I'm still I'm still getting comfortable with that title. So. <laughs> hey, everybody! Uh, it's Fergus and Jen here. We actually recently noticed that not all of you who are listening to this podcast are actually subscribed. So why don't you click on the subscribe button so you don't miss out? Enjoy the rest of the podcast. But yeah, so you you've got to know you know if if. If you're selling a product for a thousand pounds, but it turns out you're only willing to spend a fiver to get that thousand pounds in, the math doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't make. I mean, we're working with a client at the moment; they're an online retailer, and I won't say any more than that because it'll give it away. But their whole campaign is about return on ad spend. So, how much do we have to spend in order to make a sale? And how much more is that sale worth to us than our spend? Now, as it stood this morning, on a little test thing we've done over the weekend, they'd spent £30 and it had returned £245. I mean, pretty much any business on those margins should be thinking happy days. That's, you know, That's the kind of maths I like. Sorry? That's the kind of maths I like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I know how to get you talking maths. Yeah, that, yeah <laughs> it's just... it's, And that's why, you know... Well, we've got to be enthusiastic about our business. What we do is it's our livelihood. But when, when you know, when friends do ask about oh, Facebook tracking you or your telly listening to you, whatever it might be, and Big Brother, blah, blah. yeah, okay, there are. You know, we know that Facebook obviously, you know, got its its knuckles wrapped badly, privacy issues and stuff. But if 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 people out there, consumers, can acknowledge that there's no such thing as a free lunch, I think it'd be a bit more understanding. That you know, if you are gonna sign up to a loyalty card scheme or sign up to join Pinterest or whatever it might be, you are giving them a certain amount of your data. Now, there does need to be perhaps more clarity about what data you're giving away. Also, be careful about what you do share online. We talked about this, you know. There's no point moaning about Facebook if you're happy to buy stuff on PayPal and then you don't go and log out of PayPal. You've got much bigger security issues to worry about than than Facebook knowing that you might play games. Yeah, absolutely. I always think that about people who go into coffee shops or gyms and use the public Wi-Fi to check their bank. I just... Oh man, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get get our IT client on that. That's a new new blog for them straight away. <laughs> but people people that like like saying about the question we ask on social media training: Do you know who owns Instagram? It's the same with consumers. They're just not. They're probably just not not going to know this stuff. We know this stuff because it's it's our business. Um, but I think, you know, with the way that accountability and, and privacy and privacy transparency is going, mm. I think more and more people, more and more, especially the young, you know, the younger, but even, even my kids, they, they know how online advertising works more than, than a, lot, a lot of adults, I think, because that's what they've grown up with. They know that they're likely to get served ads based upon their, their, their age and interests. Oh, yeah. I mean, these... I mean, your your kids will fall into this category, absolutely. Most of the entertainment they consume is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so the ads served to them are based around what they've been consuming on YouTube. So they're used to it. It's just, it's second nature to them. And when they watch people either having to record TV or sitting down at a set time to watch a programme because that's when it's broadcast, it doesn't make sense to the younger generation. They don't understand... The whole, you know, how half the nation used to sit down at half past seven to watch Coronation Street. That doesn't make sense to somebody under the age of 25. It just makes no, it makes no sense to them. 5.35, neighbours. Yeah, 5.35. I think 5.35 on BBC One, and then you switch over um, to ITV at six o'clock to watch Home and Away. Home and Away, and you could do the same at, was it one and 
one thirty and one thirty in the day. Today, wasn't it? Are, yeah. they, are they still going? Neighbours, isn't it? Right? Channel Five now, yeah. I wonder if Al Stewart's still in Home and Away. Bound to be. What was like it? Flaming Galars. I was just about to say Flaming Galar, Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I love Al Stewart. I used to be obsessed with Home and Away. Alf and then uh, Donald Fisher. Flathead. Yeah, he was the he was the headmaster of the school. Yeah, he used to have an amazing barnet, didn't he? Yeah, Donald Fisher. Yeah, I was one of the really interesting when there's people older than you with better hair and thicker hair than you. Oh well, that's going to be the case for me all the time now. So uh, of course, I, I tell you, I'm obsessed at the moment. There, there's a, a few a few TV programs we watch, and there's someone on. You know, there'll be a, an actor on there, and he's like in his fifties or sixties. I'd be like, God, he's got a really thick head of hair, hasn't he? I'm like, my God, what a middle-aged thing to say. Who's that chap out of American Pie that plays Jim's dad? He has got... Oh, God, with the eyebrows. Yeah, incredibly thick hair. Heavy, heavy? <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, thinning hair. Let's, let's, let's not get started on that with your new upside-down head. Well, you know, I'm growing the beard out now, full Triple H, so... Are you really? Yeah, I think so. And what are you going to do on the top? Just leave it bald. Are you going to carry on shaving it? Well, I've trimmed it again this morning. Is your wife listening to this recording? Uh, no. Um, she's really, really not on board with the situation. Um, Who's going to win then? I'm calling it, it now that Hannah's going to win. I think you underestimate how stubborn I am. Oh, I don't know, but I, I, I also, I don't think you can, you can underestimate how, how much you depend on Hannah. Well, yeah, but she cuts her hair all the time, so... She doesn't shave it off, though. But she hasn't got a magnificent beard. <laughs> that would be worrying. <laughs> right, cool, right, so big data. Oh, we're put, putting the world to rights again now. We, talk, we talked about COVID-19, we talked about positivity, we talked about mindset, we talked about Big, data. big Brother. Yeah, I think, I think the, the key takeaway for small businesses is it's very affordable to target the perfect demographic for your product or service and also to be quite smart about how you reserve your business to those people yeah i mean, so we, I, mean um, I was speaking to a potential new client the other day and it's obviously price is something that you know i don't think any business owner will ever get to the bottom of. again unless you're selling the cheapest widget on the market mm. And let's talk about certain adver- online advertising package, including on Facebook ads that we get. And we're talking about the price, and it was like, okay, oh yeah, that's that's quite a lot. And fair enough, you know, it's 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 a, a decent uh, a decent amount of money. Yeah, yeah. And I said, um, yeah, how we look at it, or it, it's about the same price as a full page ad in a monthly county glossy magazine. And yeah. he was like, oh right, I never looked at it like that. I'm saying nothing against glossy county magazines they're great and they can be an, uh, an important part of the marketing mix for some businesses but you've got a static ad that gets served you know goes out to people and will also get seen by a lot of people you don't even know who they are or you get an ad that can reach thousands more people and that's thousands more targeted people the people most likely to buy off you and that's how we compare the two yeah it's like oh right okay because I think maybe there can be a, a, a perception that oh online ads that that will be that will be next to nothing. It does have to cost something. You can't spend a pound a day and and expect miracles. But when you compare to like okay well okay what does the local newspaper cost? What does it cost to do leaflets? What does the local county glossy magazine charge? And make make more of a comparison on that front because flexibility is something I think especially now people value i think flexibility and simplicity yeah and, and we talked about this recently that when when the country gets back on its feet we'll be seeing a whole lot of businesses that are streamlining i don't mean you know making staff redundant although that might be a part of it i mean about streamlining their processes having a look at the numbers and seeing what could be done simpler is there a lot of wastage in their business and simple is good to be honest, and yeah. and flexibility is good because if, if if someone has paid for a year's worth of static advertising up front and suddenly that's all gone to pot, it's like, oh bugger, I wish I'd taken out a bit more of a flexible deal now, which obviously can be done if you're using digital. Well, yeah. I think there's that kind of 
there's still a generation of people that are so used to having something tangible for their spend. So if you're in a glossy magazine, you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can pass it to somebody. And you can't do that with a digital advert. But when I sit with, say, someone who runs an e-commerce shop and say to them, look, for every £50 you spend with us, we'll return £300. Then they start listening. Or if you sit with someone and say, look, your your advertising campaign is going to generate roughly a thousand extra clicks to your website every week. And of those extra clicks, we'll also retarget everybody. So then you can expect another 500 clicks on top of that of people who must be interested. That's when people start listening, when you can kind of break it down to the, the benefit at the other side. Absolutely, absolutely. I, you know, what, what is the pain you're in and, and how can it be sold for you accountably and cost effectively? Yeah, definitely that. And I think you just, you're going to see so much more of this. On the other, on the other side of this lockdown and COVID-19 situation, like you say, people want to simplify their businesses, but once they find that kind of magic formula, the, the services they want to offer and the ones that they know people are interested in, they'll be able to work with digital advertising and digital marketing to essentially generate a predictable prospect funnel they'll be able, they'll know exactly how many people they'll be adding to their funnel each week and roughly how many people they'll be able to convert yeah yeah absolutely i mean there's so many cool um bits of software automation obviously it all has to start with knowing your market and, and creativity but to involve automation at some level there's so many i think that there's still quite a lot of uh, marketers and advertisers that are, everything's a manual process mm. whereas there are so many pieces of automation and technical options out there now that can i'm not talking about just making things easier and simpler but making it more effective because rather than you sat there transferring prospects in excel from one file to another you've got software that's doing that for you and you can work on getting the right people into that funnel onto that spreadsheet it's just better for the client. Better for it's, everyone. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's, yeah, just an, a hugely exciting time. Obviously, you know, we've, you know, let's say we, we've still got challenges and, and issues to face. Um, I don't think anything can be worse than that, that initial shock period. Um, but, you know, at some point you do have to sit down, right, I've moaned and bitched and, and watched enough Netflix for the next year now. I need to do something about it because I've got, I've got five kids to feed. Well, I have, <laughs> you know, I've got two kids to feed. Um, although one of our clients just had his sixth child. So, um, so wow. yes, congratulations, uh, Vince. Uh, it be a very good Father's Day for you. Um, so, yes, yeah, six. I mean, blimey, he must have no hair at all. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, kids to look after, clients to look after, staff to look after, you know, for us to get, oh, I can't wait to, especially, you know, somebody who's quite antisocial like me, just can't wait to, for all of us to be, having pizza in our, in our training room again. Yeah, definitely. I think, and on that note, really, we should um, just extend an invite. If you've got a business you'd like to talk about or you'd like to talk about marketing or challenge our views, we'd be happy to have guests on the podcast. We've got a, cool, a couple of cool guests coming up soon and uh, just sharing the positivity and, and also, you know, I want to hear about other people's expertise and their opinions out there as well. Cool. Excellent. You've got a very, very cool guest uh, coming soon. He can't say anything more about it, I suppose. Yeah, I get, I, the clue I'd say is if you're interested in computer games at all um, and some of the biggest computer games releases there's ever been, you're going to really enjoy this podcast. It's, it's going to be another level. So. Right, so I guess we better go. I've just had a telling off from Evie who's asked if I film my video for today um, for her to get working on and, and I haven't. Have you done yours? Yeah, of course I have. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Right, I'm going to get All right. So we'll catch you again for another episode of Break It Down. Take care, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye.